But I think what people don't necessarily realize is that the foundations of the tech industry actually come from a lot of the work that happens at universities. Um, thanks for joining me at the Johns Hopkins uh, Bloomberg Center for this conversation about startups and entrepreneurship. And AI, obviously. AI, in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, sure. the 80s, corporations didn't weren't putting money into this. Certainly venture capital, with the exception of a brief five-year period, were not putting money into this. It was government-funded research. The students on the campuses, it was the professors who were giving rise to these companies. The types of faculty and students that, that are learning and training at, at places like Hopkins, but all over, they are bringing those tech Nest technologies to market. AI-assisted tools for early detection, disease prediction, drug interaction. Where do you see the most potential? Here. Imagine a world where you could just, with a simple algorithm, detect pancreatic cancer, right? Generally, by the time it's detected, it's a death sentence. A lot of the money has been canceled, not just at Johns Hopkins, but elsewhere is in limbo. What is the impact right now on research at places like Johns Hopkins? What the NIH has done over time with very competitive grant funding to universities and ultimately to the commercial sector, these incredible group of three sectors that came together have lowered the deaths of heart disease and stroke by 75% in the last 40 years. When I was growing up, HIV and AIDS was a death sentence and now you can live a normal lifespan. Cutting off basic research to universities is so short-sighted. That's our magic formula in this country. That's our secret sauce. My greatest fear is for this incredibly talented generation of scientists that are going to choose necessarily not to do that work. If their grant funding's cut off, if they're unable to continue their work, they'll go do something else. And what does that mean for the next decades of that type of progress? If you could do one thing to fundamentally secure innovation in the AI space for the next generation of entrepreneurs, what would it be? Look, I think there has to be a combination of thinking about the products, the returns, and also the policy. Let's come together and figure out what the policy arguments are, what the future of that investment would be.